So our first question will be uh, to Mr. Brett Walker SC. And the question is, are bail laws inconsistent with the presumption of innocence? An innocent person can be held in jail for many years until the person gets the opportunity to prove their innocence. So the question is, are the bail laws inconsistent with the presumption of innocence? Well, no, unless you enjoy the idea of having criminal trials where the accused person doesn't bother to turn up. That's what bail laws are for. Um, when you are arrested and charged, it is expected that there will be a trial if the prosecution is going to continue. And in our system, fortunately, we don't have trials in absentia. So you've got to have the accused present. That's a good idea. In order to have the accused present, they've got to turn up. And I know this may shock some people, but some people when they've been investigated, arrested and charged, would decide if they had the choice not to turn up for the trial because they probably have the view that uh, one possible ending of the trial, some of them may well think one probable ending of the trial will be conviction and punishment, which may include imprisonment. Now, I'm being a little facetious, but I'm labouring the point. Uh, the laws in question are not so much the bail laws as what I'll call the remand laws. Let me explain. Being remanded in custody is one of those very powerful, important powers of the state to detain someone, to imprison somebody before they have been convicted uh, and sentenced to imprisonment. Uh, in these days, I can compare it, of course, to quarantine, where the state obviously has powers to detain people uh, if necessary for quarantine purposes. And for hundreds, probably now going on for thousands of years, certainly in our system for hundreds of years, it's the expectation that in criminal justice, uh, the accused person can be remanded in custody, that is held in custody pending trial, for fear that if they weren't in custody, they may interfere with witnesses, offend again, or simply flee, that is escape so that they do not turn up for their trial. So the bail laws are actually a relief against remand which might be regarded as the usual state of affairs. For very serious offences, say major drug trafficking with life sentence, um, uh, imprisonment as a possible penalty, uh, who are those people being uh, cynical and calculating businessmen, uh, you'll appreciate that the possibility, the reality of organising escape and a life of luxury somewhere other than Australia uh, is completely realistic. And so of course they're remanded in custody. Bail laws are a relief against that. And it's for those reasons that I think, if anything, bail laws should be seen as a rather small detail in the very important social project of ensuring that the criminal law is dominated by the presumption of innocence. Where bail laws become most acute, where we should all be concerned, and where I hope our legislators are concerned, uh, is uh, delays in criminal courts. Uh, it is a terrible thing uh, to look someone in the eyes who's just been acquitted and who has already spent more than a year in prison on their bar. And so, once again, the solution is not in fiddling with the bail laws, but would rather be to ensure that trials are much quicker uh, than, than they have been. In France, you know, to misquote Lawrence Stern, they organise these things differently. And it is still the case that mostly in France, if you have been remanded in custody and you are acquitted or eventually not prosecuted, you get some daily tariff. I don't think it's much more than a uh, three-star hotel rate uh, for having been in custody. At least that demonstrates the notion that you've given up your liberty for a social good, namely ensuring that accused people attend their trials. So for those reasons, no, there's nothing fundamentally at odds between the bail laws and the presumption of innocence.